Hello, hello. I finally get to meet you face to face. I know, right? How are you? I'm well, and yourself? I'm good, thank you, everybody. I have Tristan Layfield of Layfield Resumes, and I got to tell you, I met Tristan over Instagram. He's like one of the rarest <laughs> friends that you're ever going to find in my friend roundup, because I just don't make friends with people on Instagram. Not like that. I, yeah. I could probably name one other. But we have kind of a connection here, and it's through Black Enterprise, right? Yeah, it is. I, I was nominated as one of their, uh, their BE Modern Men, and, so and that's sort of how we got connected. We got a BE Modern Man in the house. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. And yes, I wanted to uh, learn more about your services, and apparently you're killing it, because they don't just select any old BE Modern Man. <laughs> I'm trying out here, man. I'm trying real hard. <laughs> you want to tell everybody what you do? Yeah, yeah. So, um, like you said, my name is Tristan. I, I started Layfield Resume Consulting uh, in January of 2017. Um, and initially, I started doing just resume reviews, revamps, and cover letters. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my audience really loved that. Uh, but they were also seeking some help in some other areas. So they were starting to ask me about LinkedIn profiles and uh, starting to ask just about overall guidance in their career. So I added some services a little bit later in the year, um, including my what I call my signature program, my boss up career coaching. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so I really just approach career development with my clients by combining their own personal brand with, uh, you know, their career field through strategic coaching and the development of resumes, cover letters, and LinkedIn profiles that are consistent and, and have unique formatting that really help them stand out. And you know what? You're not exactly a senior citizen, right? No, no. <laughs> You're pretty I, I, young. I'm pretty young. I'm, I'm, I'm just pushing 30 next month. Wow, y'all. See? Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> that is so awesome. I am proud of you. That is just wonderful. And you're an extrapreneur tour too, right? You 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 have a day job and Yep. yep. Yeah. Currently I work for IBM and, and do some pro well, I was doing project management for them, but now I just moved over into quality assurance. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you have your entrepreneurial pursuits yep. and that's going well too. So it before is. before we get off into too much more, let's have a culture soup moment. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, awesome. So, you know, I look at the threads all the time. And, you know, at any given moment, you could see that folks are out there looking for a job. Yep. I mean, how obvious is that, right? Yeah. And I think at the beginning of the year, people are making these resolutions and trying to um, turn over a new career leaf, if you will, to get out of whatever job they might be in now or grow. Um, they may not be unhappy. They may just be looking for the next thing. This is where you sit. I think it's very interesting that you mentioned, and I knew that it was probably going to head that way. Beyond <laughs> resumes, you get involved in a lot of conversations around social media, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> and, and what kind of conversations are you hearing? Um, well, you know, really, it, we're in this golden age, what I call the golden age of branding, another golden age of branding, right? Um, this this was a concept that really used to only apply to businesses. But now with the onset of social media, it applies to the regular everyday person, mm -hmm. right? Um, people are able to get out there and by posting articles and, and, you know, different tidbits about their industry, they're able to really spark conversation and, and start to brand themselves as a subject matter expert. So that's mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that what I'm gearing my clients towards, especially on platforms like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one of the platforms that people need to get on and they need to utilize. They're not utilizing. You know it. what? I'm so glad you said that because I get hit with this all the time. Now, I've been yeah. a member of LinkedIn since probably around 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. So I was an early adopter and long before the platform had updates. But even then, because I had my own business, <clears throat> I would use it not only to recruit, but I'd also use it to um, work warm leads, you know, to build my business. I am hit all the time by people who have been in business, been in their careers, 17, 18, 20, umpteen billion years. And they look at me and they're like, I don't get LinkedIn. Like, what? What is it? What do you do? And I think most people just think it's my business card to the world. Once mm -hmm. I put my picture up and I put my job title in the headline and then put a little bit of my resume in there, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, everybody thinks that. But you're everybody, not. No. Are you? no. 
<laughs> no, no, nah, fam, it don't work like that. No, it, doesn't. it does not. <laughs> you know, you really need to post engaging posts yourself mm-hmm. and interact with other people's posts and really build a name for yourself on the platform. Uh, the more you do that, the more your name's going to be out there and the higher chance you're going to have, you know, either your clients reaching out to you or recruiters reaching out to you for those things that you're actually trying to do. But people think that you just put your profile out there and everybody's going to come running. And that's yeah, not it's like the case. two sets of people out there. There are people that are posting, you know, engaging all of this good stuff. And then there's that other group that I just described. It's like, I don't get it. And what I found is, and maybe, you know, too, there's some judgment that happens between those two groups. Like the yep. first group turns, it's like, oh, it doesn't take all that. What are they doing? Is this yeah. self-promotion? <laughs> Yeah. And the other group is like, why are they just sitting there? It's collecting dust. Yep, exactly. Those two factions, they, they're at war all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so how, how do you get out there in a way? Because I think there's a bit of fear that some people have to overcome when it comes to, you know, posting a bit. And I talk about the algorithm being very simple yeah. and easy to kind of ease your way in. What do you suggest? Yeah, it's easy to ease yourself in. What One of the things I say with people, if they're scared about doing their own posts, just start by interacting with other people's posts. Mm-hmm. That's the first step, right? Comment on engaging posts. The posts, you know, LinkedIn's really good at showing you the posts that are getting a lot of activity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, get on those. Put your little two cents in. It's fine if, if it's different than everybody else's. Actually, it's probably going to be better if it's different than <laughs> everybody else's, right? Um, and just sort of start that way. And then, then I say start by just posting articles that are, are relevant to your industry and maybe take if you're not if you're not uh, willing to put your own opinion on there right away, maybe just take a good quote from the article and lead with that as your description um, until you're feeling a little more comfortable to get your own opinion out there. Because I think that's one of the biggest things. And it, it we think that that would only happen on like the Instagrams and Twitters mm-hmm. of the world. But people are really scared of what your opinion is going to do for your career on LinkedIn. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so. And maybe that's because they know their colleagues are out there, too. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what it is. And I tell people, you know, you could be an introvert on LinkedIn and be very, very successful. Even if you don't post your own comments, mm-hmm. you may just start by liking someone else's post because your people see it in your community and yep. their people see it in their community. Just make sure yep. it aligns with your brand, right? Absolutely. That's it. And the whole name of the game is just having your having your name out there. That's really all you want. You want people to see your name, see your profile. People get interested. They they fall into spirals just like they do on Instagram or, or Twitter. And, you know, eventually they'll get there and be like, oh, I might have something for this guy. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you mentioned know? spirals. What yeah. is that? Talk to me about what you, you mean know, about that. It's that weird thing where you start clicking on people's posts and you see who's commenting. And then you start clicking on that person's profile. And then you start seeing what their activity is. Mm-hmm. And then they have the... The p- people who view this have also viewed this yes. profile. So you're clicking over there. You know, it, you just fall into a spiral of, of really I, I, I LinkedIn stalking people. I, guess. <laughs> I love that term spiral. Yeah. So, well, let's talk about how you built your brand and how you've gotten your business out there. Because, I mean, you got recognized by a national publication. Yeah. So um, really, it was it was interesting because I didn't think that this would be as big as it's become so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. <laughs> Initially, the way I really got started is I used to be a hiring manager for a biotech company for about four and a half years. Um, and I was overseeing a team of 23 across four, four different states. Mm-hmm. And I was always hiring for my team, always helping directors hire for my team, so on and so forth. So I had a lot of friends and family come to me saying, hey, can you help me with my resume or help me get a job? And so that's what I ended up doing I was just doing it you know the kindness of my heart (coughs) for free whatever the case may be when they came to me and then I started noticing hey these people are actually getting jobs Mm -hmm. in in the areas that they want to get they want to get them in I was like so I'm on to something here so I decided to start my company thought it'd be you know one or two resumes here or there Um, and all of a sudden you know I remember my first week I had I well not not my first week in business but the first week I had like I think there was like seven, I had seven resumes doing that week. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> this, this is, this is much better than, than I thought it would be. And really it was just being consistent. Um, I think consistency has been the thing that has really helped me build my brand. You know, I've, I have certain things that I post on certain days and then I also just post whatever I think may fit inside of my brand. Um, and I do that across all of my platforms. Um, 
and I tailor it to each platform, right? Because what you post on Instagram, it's not necessarily exactly what you want to post on LinkedIn or, or on Facebook. Um, so, you know, just making sure you're tweaking them and doing that type of stuff. And eventually, you know, um, uh, people started noticing, you know, uh, Black Enterprise was sort of interesting because, um, you know, you have to be nominated to be a, right. a BE Modern Man. Right. And um, it was really about stepping out there on faith and saying, hey, I know how good I am. Good um, for and- you. <laughs> Thank you. Can we and- stop right there for a second? Because I was having this conversation with someone at my job. I'm about to moderate a mm-hmm. panel of officers at at and um, that are training uh, would-be officers. So they're like level fives on a- executive digital presence. And one of the conversations that we had in planning was it's okay Mm -hmm. to speak for yourself. Like that is like the new thing because the old way is no, let somebody else do it. Um, Don't we have a Corpcom team? Um, Shouldn't they be posting? Um, I mean, I, I won this award, but how do I get it out there? And it's like, Post it, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like literally nobody nominated me. I actually stepped out on Facebook. was like, I know how good I am. I nominated myself. Good for and, you. And literally, you know, you had to have the nominator space. And it was like relationship to the nominee. I said, I am the I nominee. I am the nominee. <laughs> and I was like, Can I give you a high five? Like, there you go. Like, <laughs> I was like, you know, either they're going to love it or they're going to hate it, but it is what it is. And and I had to sort of practice what I preach, right? Mm-hmm. Part of my thing with a lot of my clients is telling them to be their own biggest advocate. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I'm going to tell somebody to do that, then I need to practice it. Right. So that's what I did. And, and it was sort of, it, it things sort of spiraled from there. And next thing you know, I was featured on the Muse simply because <laughs> I posted, a, I posted an Instagram post about how I got fired from my first job. And I just tagged all these platforms and the Muse messaged me. I'm like, oh my wow. God. Sorry. Okay. Let's, you've, you've tapped into something here. You <laughs> are incredibly authentic and you are transparent mm-hmm. and that is key. And we're going to do a whole month's worth of conversations on authenticity in March. Yeah. I'm a line up all sorts of experts and, and divas and CEOs and C's and C level, whatever to talk about this. Yeah. But I like the way you have, you know, owned up to your truth, whether it was I nominated myself or it was, you know what? I got fired and mm-hmm. this is what happened to me. You're telling your story. What I learned from Trudy Bourgeois, which um, she's going to be one of the um, executive coaches that comes on in March. Um, Mm -hmm. She talks about how when you own your story Mm -hmm. and you're authentic about it, it's like that breaks open all the possibilities for you to succeed. And there's so many reasons why. Yep. How did you come to the conclusion that I just need to be honest about this and just put it out there? Well, you know, the thing that really sells you in any fashion, whether that be you searching for a job, whether that be you're an entrepreneur trying to get clients or whatever the case may be, is your uniqueness. Mm-hmm. And your uniqueness is your story. Yeah. Um, you know, and some of the things like people will be ashamed to say they got fired. Most people have been fired from a job, <laughs> right? It's a relatable thing, but yeah. none of us wanted to talk about it. Right. Um, so, you know, really just taking those things and, and just saying, yes, this is what happened to me, but now look where I am. Right. Absolutely. Good for you. So what are some of the no-nos that you see people doing on their resumes? Um, so. It's like, where to begin? <laughs> so I think there's there's sort of a, I would say there's three major mistakes I just think people make overall in job searching, and one of them is with their resumes. Mm-hmm. The first one is not fully reading the job description. Mm. Um, you know, statistics show that we spend about 76 seconds reading a job description. Oh. Just over a minute. And then we wonder why we aren't getting calls back or why we end up in jobs that we absolutely hate. Right. Um, (laughs) That's interesting because, you know, there's stats out there that say that women will study these things. They look at the job description and they will see two qualities that they think they don't have and like swipe left. Yep, they absolutely do. Women, apparently, uh, according to studies, women have to mentally, they have to meet all 100% of the requirements or they're not going to apply. Whereas I think the stats, like men only have to meet like 40 to 50% of them. And And let me guess, they're the ones that are like speed reading. (laughs) Yep, 
more than likely. I I truly believe they're they're bringing down that 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 number of seventy six yeah. seconds. To be honest, right? Yeah. Um, in that seventy six seconds, it, it's it's bad because what happens is you're not identifying the keywords or phrases that are in the job description, mm-hmm. which then tells me you're not tailoring your resume to the job that you're applying you to. You know what? And that I saw you you posted that one day. I don't know if it was on IG or if it was on LinkedIn or something. That little nugget right there, I took that to one of my mentees and it changed her life. Yeah. Yeah, you have they to were tell like, your- wait, 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 wait. That makes a lot of sense. Like, look at the job description and then make sure the keywords are in your resume. Hello? Yes. That's yes, so absolutely. That, it, it's, it's, it, it's necessary because most recruiters... Um, well, most job postings get anywhere from about 150 to 200 applicants and recruiters can be responsible for 10, 20, 30, 40 jobs. So you times that by 200, there's no way they're getting through all these resumes on their own. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most companies have an applicant tracking software and that applicant tracking software scans your resumes for those keywords or phrases mm-hmm. from the job description. Um, if you do not have them and you have not fit them in organically where they fit, odds are your resume is going to be thrown in that no pile before a recruiter even sees it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you may be qualified. Yep. What Absolutely. Absolutely. So you got to make sure that you tailor those things or else you're not even going to be seen. Well, you're speaking the content now, which is very, very important. But I have also noticed that people are getting very creative about their resumes, too, from video resumes to these highly designed one pagers that look like, you know, some Fortune 500 design team had their hands on it. What do you think about these? Um, So, you know, it's sort of the the new way of resumes. And and I think that's completely fine. Um, You just need to make sure that you're gauging your audience. Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things are not going to be appropriate for every place that you apply to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, things like video video resumes or infographic resumes, as they're calling them, um, you know, those are all great. And I'm starting to do some of those with my clients as well. But, you know, those are the people who are really trying to stand out for those one in a million shots, you know, those Apples, those Googles, those, you know, those big name companies that are going to appreciate you not just putting in a piece of paper Mm -hmm. um but you know if you're you're applying to some some small firm you know in the middle of nowhere michigan odds are they're gonna be like what the heck is this infographic (laughs) what what is this um so you know as long as you gauge your audience it's Mm -hmm. fine but you know uh a lot of people will like to rag on it and this and the other because we're we're not big on change. Mm-hmm. But um I think it's really great. And you know, resumes have been stagnant, they've sort of been the same since they they started really, you know, yeah. there's minor change here or there, but it's the same thing. So I, one, I welcome Yeah, there's one format that I've adopted that I think is really, really um impactful. And that's where you have the the sidebar comments right off the top and kind of call out boxes. Um, yeah. On the side, I think that's really impactful, especially for, you know, when you get to a hiring manager that's a C-level or a, an officer or something like that, they like to get it and be gone, right? Yeah. So to, yep. if you know that project management is one of those skills that they're going to be looking for, call that out and yep. put it to the side. Don't bury it in, you know? And yep. I, I think that's effective. And I mean, I'm nobody's creative designer. I do okay on Canva, but I haven't put my resume through it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you definitely want to call things out. That is correct. You know, when recruiters actually do end up getting your resume, the mm-hmm. first thing they do is they scan it, and they scan it for about six seconds. And if mm-hmm. they don't see the things that they like automatically, mm-hmm. you're in that no pile. Right. Um, so, so, you know, in that six seconds, they need to be able to find those things that are relevant. Absolutely. Um Tell us more about your resume business. How does it work? So you're consulting with people. Do you actually take the resumes and redo them yourself or? Yeah. Yeah. So typically I like to start with a free consultation with most people so I can lay my eyes on their resume, sort of figure out where they're at, what they're trying to do um, and sort of, you know, let them know what I think I can do for them too. I like to make sure people are aware of what's going on. And then um, if they decide to move forward with services, my most purchased service is my resume revamp. And what happens with that is uh, we have a one hour intake call with Mm -hmm. every client. um, And basically before that one hour intake call, I go through and I develop any questions 
questions that I have regarding details or clarity, mm -hmm. right? So any details that I think may be beneficial to have inside your resume and then clarity, either I didn't understand it or I want to make sure I understand it correctly. So when I do rewrite it, I'm not lying for you down the line, right? right Nobody, right. Wants, that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> exactly. It's the resume so, guy. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, so then once we do that, uh, we go through our intake call, 50% of that calls for me to get the answer to those questions and 50% of it's to really run through your experience and give you an opportunity to figure out how you're framing it. So that way, when you get in front of those interviewers or those recruiters, you know how you're framing. Your so let's stop experience. here for a second. I, I got to say something about the skill that you just laid out. That means people from no matter what industry are coming to you and you're able to synthesize whatever it is they do, no matter how technical, no matter how creative, no matter how, you know, mundane, yep. you're able to synthesize that stuff and, and get it in the right context, in the right meaning, um, yep. and, and, and make it into something that works in their very own industry. That is yep. a gift, man. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, Thank you. like most people understand what it is they do, right? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to something like, you know, oh, gee, you know, I'm in communications and this person's in biotech, mm -hmm. you know, eyes glaze over. No, you're looking at what it is they do. How do you do that, man? I mean, like, really? Yeah. So it takes a lot of reading. It's a reading. superpower. <laughs> it takes a lot of reading. I, you know, I, I read a lot of articles. I, I try to stay connected to a lot of different industries, right? Um, I have friends who are in a lot of different industries and now I'm always talking to them about their jobs, what mm -hmm. they do. Um, so, you know, it's really just pulling from my network, pulling from my resources, making sure that I'm reading and staying on top of things. Um, and, and really that intake call is a great place for me to ask my questions. If I don't mm -hmm. know something, I'm not going to fake like I know it. Mm -hmm. I want to know it. So I can write it. Right. Uh, you know, well, and so. you, this is, you know, you got to be transparent because when the resume comes back and your client looks at it, they're like, this guy don't know what he's talking about. Like, exactly. what? I trusted him to do what? Yeah. And so I always tell my clients, you know, the thing about it is, Everything that you purchase with me has a 60 day satisfaction guarantee. So with the resumes, that's with up to two full free revisions. So um, I always tell my res uh, well, my resume customers, if you do not like what I bring to you, let me know right away mm -hmm. and I'll make sure that we get it resolved. And I always tell them I expect at least one round of revisions from you because at the end of the day, you know your experience better than I do. Right. Um, you know, so I, I like to be transparent and let people know what to expect. I'm going to do my best and I'm going to convey it the best way I know how. But at the end of the day, this is your career. You know it best and you need to make sure you let me know so we can sell you appropriately. Yeah. So what do people need to be doing? You call it the golden age of the personal brand. I hear a lot of folks talking about a renaissance is happening, especially around technology. Now that Especially underrepresented groups have their hands on social media. They can make a lot of things happen, whether it's starting their own business, branding themselves and becoming experts in the, you know, they're speaking on every platform in the world now, <laughs> writing books, no matter mm -hmm. what it is. What should people be doing right now in this golden age, now that we have these tools? Um, mm-hmm. My bi my biggest thing, one of the things I see with a lot of my clients is that we <laughs> we don't know what we want to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I think. A lot of us have been in this in this situation where um, we've been forced since kindergarten to figure out what we want to be when we grow up, mm -hmm. right? And so we, we pigeonholed ourselves into these things that by the time we're 21, 24, 30, 35, we actually realize we don't like that, yeah. right? So this the this golden age of, of internet and social media and all that, it's amazing because it allows us to really get out there. And sometimes we can't actually get into the field to see if mm -hmm. we like something, but we can research things. We can mm -hmm. set up informational interviews with people, talk to them about what they're doing, and really try to find and narrow down what we want to do ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a big thing for a lot of us. And I think social media really helps with that. Sometimes it can hinder it depending on how you utilize it. Right. You need to utilize right. it correctly. Um, but I think it's a really great place to, to sort of help you figure out what you want to do um, and let you know that really 
I think now more than when we were told it when we were younger, you can pretty much do anything. (laughs) You know, so so I think it's really just narrowing down what you want to do and figuring out how you're going to do it with actionable steps from there. Well, and you know, um, entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. That's for sure. And you're in a a great position to help people get jobs. Um, Let us bless those folks out there that are killing the nine to five and that's what you do because a lot of times I hear people like poo-pooing on people who have jobs because entrepreneurship is oh that's what you should be doing you shouldn't be working for anybody but I had a really good conversation with Miko Branch did you hear it I did she was just breaking it down like entrepreneurship is tough yeah, we have to dead that talk. We have to stop shaming people for being in corporate because if everybody is the entrepreneur, if everybody's the boss, who's going to work? Right. 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 There, there. Uh, you need people inside of your business who are eventually going to be your employees. So exactly. you should probably stop shaming them for <laughs> for working inside of a business because eventually you're going to need someone exactly. to work inside. Exactly. Exactly. And some of these big companies go over and beyond to have suppliers. That are small businesses. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, so you need people in those big companies to do that. Yeah, and I think we also need to realize that the the mindset of entrepreneurship does not lie strictly in being an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. right? You can be well, what they call now an intrapreneur. Exactly. Somebody thought I made that up, and I didn't no. make that up, people. No, Xerox was doing this back in the 80s when they started their own group to sort of figure out what new developing things they want to do. Right. So um, you can be an entrepreneur and really have that entrepreneurial spirit inside of corporate and make a lot of difference and make a name for yourself as well. Right. Um, So we we really have to stop all that shaming. Um, Everybody can't be an entrepreneur and everybody can't cut in corporate. Right. There you go. Everybody. To each his own and exactly. do you, do you. Absolutely. So, so Tristan, um, what's entrepreneurship been like for you? Um, it's been a roller coaster, like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> entrepreneur, right? It's it's had its ups, it's had its downs. Um, you know, I I had some really high highs last year, um, and then I had some really low lows that that were sort of um, it was interesting because they were, they were caused by my day job. Mm-hmm. Um, and, here I am a career coach and I'm sort of in the situations that I'm coaching people out of, yeah. uh, you know, and so that ended up affecting my business because there was so much stress and pressure from that, that I was not able to focus directly. So, you know, there's their ebbs and flows, but at the end of the day, it's always been rewarding to know that, you know, I come home to something that I'm able to fully control, that I'm mm-hmm. able to do however I would like. Um, and, and that at the end of the day, if something was to happen with my corporate job, yes. that I have something that I'm able to fall back on. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, I remember um, at some point I was like, where's my friend Tristan? Because you went dark <laughs> on social. I was like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? And you're like, I'm back. And I was like, <laughs> yep. oh, my goodness. But, you know, sometimes you have to do that. And I came back very transparent with my audience, too. Mm-hmm. I told them, like, yeah, I was having some issues in my day job that I needed to coach myself through. And then at that point in time, it was the biggest thing I needed to focus on. So I had to do what I had to do. So where do you get your inspiration, Tristan? Ooh, you know, I think I get my inspiration the most from my my inner circle. Mm. Um no, I'm surrounded by a lot of great people who are doing a lot of great things. Like my, um, some of my best friends, they're in PhD programs, mm-hmm. you know, uh, educational leadership. And um, I have I have a friend who is a social worker who also does copywriting on the side and this, that, and the other. And I, you know, I'm just surrounded by a lot of ambitious people. And, you know, we've all heard the phrase, you're the sum of who you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think they, they really push me um, to to be better and push me to you know show up and give my full self each time. Awesome. You have any projects coming up or any books or any anything we need to know about that you'd like you to know, plug right now? I'm actually working on my first in person workshop. I just. Oh. Uh, only joined a co-working space and so I, I'm going to have some meeting space and an event space that I'm going to be able to utilize so I'm going to be working Good on for you. <laughs> yes, yes. So you got a venue, y'all. I do. <laughs> He's IRL. 
<laughs> you know, shout out to Bamboo Detroit. Um, and then also, That's you know, right, I, you're in Detroit. I forgot that. Yep. There's yep. so many good things happening in Detroit. It's amazing. And, and really, Detroit's sort of the, the cornerstone of my brand mm-hmm. at this point. And you'll see a lot of that coming from me in 2019 because Detroit's had a resurgence, right? The mm-hmm. city's on it, on the come up. But with that comes a lot of things like gentrification and mm-hmm. people being run out of the city. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of my biggest focus is working working with the residents of the city of Detroit to make sure that they're not left out of the job boom that's happening in their city, mm-hmm. right? So these workshops, they're going to really be geared towards the residents of the city of Detroit um, initially um, to make sure that they are, are are well taken care of and are able to sort of be ready for those jobs that are coming. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so workshop and then uh, I'm actually thinking about venturing into the podcasting realm myself. Hey! <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> you did. On the podcast. Yay! Exclusive. Good for you! How can no. we help you with that? You know, well, I really, I'm, I'm still working on my concept right now. Um, so I think right now my biggest thing is I want to highlight, um, you know, millennial people of color that are really doing it in their in their careers mm-hmm. to really help people, like I said, figure out what they want to do, but mm-hmm. also sort of give them that guidance and inspiration of how to get there. Yeah. Um, so so I think that's one of the biggest things that I want to do. Um you know, I'm even, I, I even am entertaining a name right now. I don't hey, really know. Hey, hey. Yeah, wait, uh, we get to hear it here first or no? Here. So I'm thinking of, of naming it Career T, Transitions, oh. Execution, and Advancement. Uh-huh. I like so, that. You know, so we'll, you're we'll gonna see. So you're going to sip your tea? While you you're... know, that's what I'm sipping right now. See? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, but, Good for you. Awesome. Thank so you. where can we find you online? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Layfield Resume. That's L A Y F I E L D R E S U M E. Um, or you can connect, connect with me on LinkedIn. It's Tristan Layfield, and first name spelled T R I S T A N. Awesome, y'all. And so if you need to revamp your personal brand, your resume, you know, um, get a little bit of that boss up training. Yeah, get yeah. in contact with Tristan. He's such, I mean, your spirit just comes through even on social media and just this good positive energy. And, and, you know, I just think you're good people. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You know, that, that means a lot coming from you because I feel the exact same way about oh, you. Wow. So. Oh, so sweet. And one day we're going to meet because I was in Detroit for NABJ and we just kind of went pew. Yeah, it was during that period where my job was yeah. stressing me out, man. Look, so we've been we'll here. get together. We'll Absolutely, get it together. Absolutely, we will. Okay. Thanks yep. so much, Tristan. Thank you for having me. All right. The Culture Soup Podcast is a production of No Silos Communication.